Hi, in this video I'll use animations to explain the working principle of various astronomical telescopes using ray diagrams. So let's look at an ancient telescope. Uh, there was a usual tripod stand and an articulating hinge to turn it and a set of long tubes. So we will focus here on three main designs of telescopes. The one is a refractor type, the second is the improved reflector type, the Newtonian one, and the third is the compound type called the Maksutov design. So let's choose a planet in our solar system, a lovely planet which is rotating about its axis, the sun is on the left hand side. We focus our telescope on the planet to get a large image and therefore our principal axis is lined up with the center of the planet. Now the construction of the telescope goes like that. There is a convex lens on the left hand side called the objective lens which collects all the light from the planet. On the right hand side there is a smaller convex lens called the eyepiece lens and it can move to and fro in order to focus properly on the planet. Now let's uh, look at uh, our ancient telescope and recall that the thicker tube is the objective lens tube shown on the left and on the right the adjustable uh, eyepiece lens tube is the thinner one. Nowadays telescopes are of much larger diameter. Looking inside the telescope the rays from the planet come in some parallel some may not be parallel so we'll assume they are not all parallel and the green and blue rays are representative of white light and they form an intermediate image shown by the inverted red arrow. The red arrow is at the meeting point of the focal length of the objective lens which is a large f1 and the small focal length of the eyepiece mirror which is the small f2. Once the intermediate image has been formed the next job of the ray diagram is to show us how the final image is formed. The whole purpose of the telescope is to get a large magnified final image. So you can see here that the rays coming out from the eyepiece are almost parallel and therefore projecting them back using a dotted line you get a large magnified image which is formed almost at infinity. And once again you can notice that the focal length f1 and the focal length f2 fall on a focal plane where the inverted image has been formed. That's very important. Now if we move the eyepiece too far away from that ideal point then you will still get an image as shown here. The image may even be larger than the previous image but it could be very blurred because we are not at the meeting point of the focal point. The f2 when started from this new position of eyepiece will fall much shorter than the original position. Now let's look at the reflector type of telescope. So Newton overcame the chromatic aberration issues of the refractor telescope. So in his uh, reflector type telescope he used only reflecting objects not lenses. So the planet is lined up as usual and the light from the planet was made to fall on a large concave mirror and which was focused on a plane mirror placed at an angle and which reflected finally into the eyes of the observer. Now if we look at a still image of this we could have a large concave mirror so therefore you can imagine that the diameter of the telescope becomes very big to catch a lot of light from the planet and then these rays impinge on a plane mirror which is positioned exactly at the focal length of the concave mirror it's shown as f1 on the top. So as long as the plane mirror is positioned correctly we will get a sharp image of the object that we are looking at. So in this reflector type telescope there are no lenses. The third type of telescope is a compound type of telescope. It has a combination of lenses and mirrors. So the incoming light goes through a corrector lens and I'll explain what that is and then it goes as usual to a concave mirror and thereafter to a, to a plane mirror and then to the our eyes. So this is called the Maksutov design. So we have the planet and the telescope tube as usual but here we have a surprise we have a concave or convex lens. So the rays from the planet come in to the concave surface diverge 
and again converge at the convex surface of that lens. After that, they become parallel, go to that concave mirror, get reflected, hit a plane mirror, and back to the eyes of the observer. So it's pretty simple actually. So let's take it one at a time. You can see the rays coming in, getting diverged at the concave surface, meeting the convex surface of the concavo convex lens, also called a meniscus lens, and then becoming parallel. Once they are parallel to the tube, they will hit the concave mirror and the plane mirror, which is shown in red, is placed exactly at the focal length. Therefore, the plane mirror reflects all the rays of light to the eyes of the observer and you get a sharp image without any problem of chromatic aberration. So this compound telescope was found to be good in getting sharp images without uh, uh, disturbance. In some cases, the plane mirror could be deleted and the back side of the concavo convex lens could be painted in silver or given a silver coating, in which case it would act as a mirror. So this kind of design was called the Maksutov Cassegrain design. The ray diagram won't change for that. I hope this was useful. Thanks and have a great day.